You're a demon, apparently. Chapter 13. You were... not looking forward to this. This may have not been the most dangerous thing you've done, especially since getting here, but you were still on edge. As you trudged through the musty cobblestone tunnel, you reflected on recent events. Knowledge of the impending demise of you and possibly many others by some vague universal concept has driven a flurry of activity over the past few days. You were finally able to move around on your own, Twilight was still a bit sore at Celestia for not telling her that her well-crafted circle meant jack shit, but she had other problems. That poor thing hadn't slept for days while trying to crack that old summoning spell. On one of your longer treks, you had been formally introduced to Ponyville. It was a nice enough town, the residents were understandably nervous around you at first. However, they seemed to warm up to you, after Pinky, Fluttershy, and Twilight vouched for you. Apparently winning them over meant a lot to them, so they welcomed you. As you got stronger, and your time out of the library lengthened, they got friendlier. You weren't sure, but you thought a few of the mayors and a stallion or two were flirting with you. It was flattering, but also extremely uncomfortable. You know, for being herbivores, they sure liked looking at you like a piece of meat. You had a brief meeting with Amber when she was able to. It was nice to see her, but it was also hard to see her in that state. She was weak, bandaged, beridden, but in good spirits. Maybe because she was drugged to hell and back, but she was aware enough to recognize you, even though she tired quickly. At one point, she got a bit flirty too, but it may have just been because of all the meds that she was on. Either way, it seems... different than the others. Maybe because you were already familiar with Amber? Whatever the reason, before you left, she placed her hoof in your hands. It gave you chills, but in a good way. Today, you had the pleasure of visiting the capital city of Canterlot. However, it wasn't really a vacation. The dungeons weren't exactly a big tourist attraction. Are you sure that you want to do this? If you don't feel that you're up for this, then... Celestia asked for at least the tenth time since arriving in Canterlot. You said it yourself. We're against the clock. How I feel isn't the biggest problem here. You replied, as you trudged behind her down the torch-lit hall. Being right was a nice cover for feeling like shit. Celestia nodded, though it was clear that she was still concerned. A loud, indiscernible scream echoed throughout the halls, accompanied by a few trails of dust falling from the ceiling. After a moment, you could make out another figure in the dim light. Luna was pacing in front of a cell door, grumbling under her breath. She looked in your direction as you approached. Feeling better, sister? Celestia asked with a slight smirk. Hardly. He still will not cooperate. I am unsure if he's brave or just plain stubborn. She huffed. Well, from how much I know about him, he's arrogant. As long as he has a shred of hope, he'll refuse to give in. You reply. Luna flashed a wicked grin. Then let us dash that hope. Celestia rolled her eyes as her magic opened the door. Inside was weary, dirty, chained up father. You have to admit, seeing him like this filled you with joy. Between stranding you here and everything he'd done to Amber, rotting in a dark prison cell was the least he deserved. Again, have you come to make more fruitless demands of me? He croaked. Not quite, you answered, not hiding your smirk. His head shot up and scrambled around to face you. His eyes were wide and his jaw hung open. Great one, have you come for me? He noticed Celestia and Luna behind you. Or... Captured. You could hear his voice fall. In a way. Luna said smugly. What? As it turns out, demons are quite agreeable. Celestia added. But I offered you everything. Blood, powers, mares, everything! Father cried. What could they have offered to you that I couldn't? Simple, you said as you leaned in to look him in the eye. They offered me the one thing that I want. To go home. And currently, you're the only thing standing in the way of that. You've heard of the expression of someone deflating, but you'd never seen it before. Father had thinned significantly since the last time you'd seen him, but now? What well, little mass he had simply withered away. You almost felt bad for him. Almost. But... but I... I did everything right. He whispered. Yeah, well that's debatable. Now! You snapped. I want to go home. You have the information to get me there, and at this point, you don't have anything else to do. So, get me home, and maybe you'll have a less shitty cage to rot in. I promise nothing! Luna added before being shushed by Celestia. Father didn't reply. He seemed to be thinking it over, him flickering around frantically. 
His face then hardened. No, he said firmly. What? What? I summoned you! Me! He roared, his rage fueling his newfound strength. You are meant to aid me. The only way that you will leave this place is by my will. If you are going to betray me, then I am to rot. Then you shall rot with me. For a long moment, the only sound was Father's ragged breathing. You, you realize that there's a good chance that we're all fucked if I don't go back, right? Me, you, your daughter, everyone. This isn't just about you anymore. You raged back. <laughs> Taking you all down with me? Oh, at this point, I'll take it. Without another word, he left the cell, followed closely by the two princesses. <sighs> oh, fuck. You groaned. <sighs> that didn't go well. I knew I was an ass, but I didn't think that he'd be such a vindictive bastard. <sighs> That's stubborn fool. Luna agreed. What now? Celestia thought for a moment. I have another option, she said slowly, but I really wish it didn't come to this. She cleared her throat. I believe it is time for you to try, she said to seemingly no one. Suddenly, there was a blare of a train horn and a bright light from the far end of the tunnel. Then riding on a miniature version of the train that brought you to Canterlot was the same creature that had invaded your dream. Discord. He was wearing a conductor outfit and exhaling smoke from his ears like a chimney. More smoke blew from his mouth every time he made another train noise. As he pulled up to the three of you, he stepped off and pulled out a large pocket watch. Right on schedule, he said cheerily. He then noticed you. Oh, my old friend, how are you doing? All right now, no thanks to you, you snapped. He recoiled, as though you slapped him. Oh, you wound me, after everything I've done for you. Oh, you mean the multiple times Amber and I almost died? Name one time I left you out to dry. The Diamond Dogs, the Storm, the Timberwolves, the Ursa Minor, and your near-homicidal pony pals. Celestia and Luna looked between the two of you, looking rather confused, but at the same time, somewhat sympathetic to you. Please, you think I would be so callous as to leave you alone in an alien world with no help? Discord countered. Yeah, you replied without hesitation. Discord scoffed. The lights dimmed as he pulled out a projection screen. Pictures of your journey thus far appeared as he monologued. I was looking out for you the whole time. Or did you think that a random branch would end up at the bottom of a rocky ravine? Or that Sakura would be out in the rain at night and show up to an Ursa Minor's cave? Oh, and how about the odds that Twiggy and her friends would show up in the nick of time to save you and your gal pal from a pack of timber wolves? Discord snapped his claws, and the lights returned to normal, and the screen disappeared. All rather convenient, isn't it? There was a moment of silence. All of your internal alarm screamed bullshit, but you had to admit, it made sense. You decided it was best to let it go, and spare the headache that you would feel always happen when you dealt with this kind of thing. <laughs> Fine, whatever. You said, throwing your hands up. What are you even doing here anyways? I know exactly why, but I want a certain some pony to say it, he replied, putting a microphone in front of Celestia. <sighs> Discord, I need your help, she groaned as she rubbed the bridge of her muzzle. Our guest has information that we need, but he is being rather difficult. And what's in it for me? Celestia sighed. <sighs> One hour, no restrictions. Discord grinned, and grabbed her front leg and shook it so hard that she began to vibrate. Done and done, and remember, no backsies! He cackled. I'll be just a moment. After a quick twirl, he donned a dark robe and now was holding a single candle that shone a little too brightly. He seemed to float as he entered the cell by phasing through the door, as ominous chanting echoed faintly from nowhere. Is he always so... extra? You ask? Yes! The princesses replied instantly. Why put up with him? Simply put, we'd rather he be an ally than an enemy. Celestia sighed. And at this point, we would not be able to get rid of him, even if we tried to. He takes far too much pleasure in annoying us. Luna added. Oh, you know it's rude to talk about someone behind their back, right? Discord had appeared behind you, like the freaky bastard that he was. You almost had a heart attack. Anyway, Father and I had quite the talk. He went on as you tried to slow your racing heart. I don't know what you were talking about. He was nothing but cooperative for me. That 
was fast, even for you, Celestia remarked. This is nonsense! What could you have possibly done that I could not? Luna demanded. The creature just smiled and patted her mane. Luna did not look pleased. Oh my dear, if you have to ask that, then you don't want to know the answer. Celestia cleared her throat. Did you get what we needed? He handed the princess a paper. As you looked over her shoulder, you could feel your eyes crossing trying to understand it. Numbers, equations, diagrams, and the seemingly random symbols were more than you could understand. Thankfully, Celestia seemed to get the gist of it. I see. Frankly, I'm surprised that this even works. Although, I suppose that's a relative term in this case. But it works, right? He meekly asked. It should, yes, but we will need some time to gather the proper materials. I just hope that we'll have enough time. Discord. The Draconicus turned and froze as he was scribbling on a paper that had the words to-do list. The so-called list actually was a very detailed picture of himself riding a rocket-powered tuna salad sandwich, hold the mayo, in space, while the sad-looking Celestia wearing a dunce hat in the background. Mini Discord was wearing a floral print dress and a cowboy hat. The 3D Celestia ignored it and addressed Discord himself. I know that you are eager, but I ask you to hold back your hour of free time until our friend here has returned to his home. The situation here is unsteady enough without your... help. Ah, <sighs> fine. Discord whined. He patted his 2D self on the head, which returned with a sad look and a whimper. I'm sorry, little one. With a snap of his claws, the paper faded to dust, which floated away in a non-existent wind. So, how long do you think it'll take? We're kind of against the clock here. You reminded the group. Not too long. Luna replied, looking over the paper herself. Although some of the components are a bit hard to come by, Father must have spent years trying to get them all together. Fortunately, the crown provides easier access to such materials than a disgruntled unicorn. Perhaps a day or two, we will be ready to begin. Good, you said as he strode back the way you had come. Then in that case, I'm heading back to Ponyville. If you really were leaving soon, then you were going to spend as much of that time with Amber as you could. That's gotta be a tough thing to swallow, heading back to a world that's full of boring stuff instead of being in a place full of adventure and amazingness. Oh boy, that really does gotta suck. Anyways, let's get on to our super charismatic donators. Top donators, TacoCat598, Peter Coltard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, Ponyman, and Gauntlet. Courier Crucii, Strix, Zar630, Narwhals, Raiden, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Dospo, Delta Omega, Runescythe9852, Hunter Norman, Austin Rowland, Dash of Evergreen, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Seeker Moon, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brother and Mordred, Ron and Wandering, and Rise 63, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Jack Hedge, Skyochia, Leslie Prickett, Jordan Peterson, Crimson Kitson A9, Lightskin, Monster Kitty, Starlight Glimmer, Lightning Blitz, Squiddy Boy, David e. Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Alex F, Rainbow Dash, Tilka Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Raven Speedster, Zach Rakao, Mystery CU, Edgar Garcia, One Kingdom One, Nissa Rusan, Vizuri, Dyslexic Character Sheets, Just a Random Boy, Hodrick Puncart, A Crazy Person, Ponyman365, Daniel Beck, Six of Nine, and Shyfire. Thank you all very much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.